Hi y'all. Welcome back to our holistic healing channel. I'm glad you found this video and are here to spend a little bit of time with me learning some more about some herbs. Today we're going to be opening the Apothecary at Home box. This is the second month that I got it. I am loving it. Um, I did the last box last month was on heart health and I'm not going to review it except for just a little bit. I may I'm going to do a video with the projects that I made, um, so look for that to come as the review for the box. But I'm not going to do a review during the regular next month's box on opening of the far former month because there's so much to learn about each herb and so much information to get out for you before I start the projects and do them. This is a monthly herbal study box that's perfect study companion for the aspiring herbalist or anyone who desires a deeper relationship relationship with plants. Each delivery introduces new herbs, recipes, and medicine making projects, as well as study guides, collectible art prints, seeds, and other bonus goodies for your garden um, and apothecary. So let's get growing. Uh, it is $39.99 a month and is cheap as $34.98 a month um, if you uh, do a 12-month subscription. Uh, I do have Karma 15 for 15% 15 off, and the, the links are in the video description um, how to order the box. So if you want to do this with me and learn with me, let me know in the comments. Get your box ordered, and I have several people that get the boxes I get, and then we chat in the video description about the projects and what we did. They are an amazing box. You get before anything starts. You get an email with the information on the herbs and the stuff that you're getting in the box. So it's not so much a huge surprise, but uh, the, the real exciting part about this box is making the projects. So, and just so you know, I did plant the yarrow seeds in one of my little pots from last month and they have sprouted and are peeking out and starting to grow, which I'm actually kind of surprised because we've had some pretty cold nights here in Arizona and they've still done really well. So hopefully I'll remember to put those in the video with my heart projects as well. Let's get in to this month's box. Um, and just so you know, this month's box is on herbal beauty. They did go into great detail about how, you know, beauty isn't just the traditional kind of thing. Um, and that will be focusing a lot more on the health of like skin, nails, and hair, uh, and not so much makeup and that kind of thing. Uh, it did give us an important uh, caution with working with one of the herbs in the initial email that came out. So I do want to tell you about that now. When you're working with horsetail, which is one of our three herbs this month, um, horsetail is an herb that has the high, they believe that it's the highest amount of silica in any plant. So because of that silica, uh, if you are crushing up the herbs, you do want to be careful because if you inhale the dust you're getting silica into your lungs and those of us that have worked with OSHA or worked in industry know that silica in the lungs can give us lung cancer. So you shouldn't have too much problem with the little amounts that we're working with but we always want to learn the precautions and make sure that we're working with the herbs with the safety recommendations. So it recommends at least a mask and then eye covering would be good too. With this small amount, I probably won't use the eye covering, um, but I will try and remember to put that dust mask on, especially if you're gonna be, you know, hand uh, mortar and pestling it, or even when you do a big blender, if you're gonna open that up and then the powder comes all up, just know that whatever is in the air that you might be inhaling could have silica in it and could be harmful to you. So, that being said, this month is herbal beauty and I'll go through a little bit of that once we get into our box so let's open it if I can ready set grow now I do you can opt just to have the digital copies sent um, in the email and they send those no matter what and I have been um, printing them up to do my studying for this box on opening, but I really prefer when they send them out because this little booklet right here covers this many pages right here. 
and that's an awful lot of ink and printing compared to this. So I do like getting theirs and keeping it with my projects and that kind of thing. And then these um, with the monographs I'll keep in a three ring binder. So we do have our, uh, our little booklet here and then um, I will be reading information as we get to the herbs and such. But just so you know, April's box is going to be womb wellness. So we're going to talk about women's issues, hormones, menopause, childbirth, all the recipes will probably revolve around that kind of thing. So first off, let's go ahead and pull out our art cards. I like getting these because I can actually use these as part of my natural stat, natural path course study. So here's your horsetail. And it's just a pretty artwork. It is blank on the back, which I like because I can actually write notes on the back. And then I can use these as an identification as I'm looking at it. Do I remember what it is? You know, those kinds of things. And then here is the other herb, and this is rosemary. I can see it now. And they do have the Latin words on the bottom, so like I said, then I can write the other words on the other side of the card. So those are beautiful, and I love getting those. I think it's a great addition to the box. Then we have our seeds, and they gave us a whole pack of rosemary seeds. And that's actually really cool because I did notice that one of the recipes that I'm going to talk about uses fresh rosemary. So I could get this rosemary growing and by spring would be able to make the recipe, and I'll share that recipe with you. Next we have our loose leaf tea, and it is a hair stimulation tea, no caffeine. It says peppermint, organic horsetail, organic rosemary, organic sage, organic nettle, and organic oat straw. And those are the three that we have in this. We have rosemary, um, horsetail, and oat straw. So I am not going to open that up. Having these where they stay fresh until you're ready to use them is kind of an important piece, so sorry. Sorry, I'm not going to smell it. And actually, these don't have tons of smell in them that would make it smell really, really good. The sage and rosemary and stuff is going to give it aromatic, but... So, my battery's dying. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Full battery, ready to go. Let's look at our... Um, what's in the box? Um, what's in the box isn't always like the super exciting part. It's actually the learning part and the making the projects. So in each box you're going to get two jars and these jars are going to be what you're going to make your concoctions in. Uh, if you want to make more than two recipes you can just buy some small jars like this. I actually really like that they do them in small jars. I used to always do mine in like a quart jar or bigger and it's nice to have a lot of product but they don't last super long and with putting your intention, your energy, you may have different purposes for what you're using it for. So I think it's really nice to be able to make um, the smaller quantities of the projects that we're making. Then you have two bottles, drop bottles, that you can use to put your tinctures or whatever infused oils, whatever it is that you make. And you notice all of these have the dark glass on them, which is good because that helps to preserve what you're doing. Then you have two bags. These are reusable bags, so you can wash them and use them again. Um, these can be used, reused for putting bath salts in and stuff. They're the perfect size for that, to put some bath salts in, put some essential oils in there, a little bit of oil, and then put them in here with herbs and stones. And that way your crystals and your herbs won't go all over your bathtub and the salt will just dissolve and the oils will dissolve in the bag and then all of your cleanup will be left in this bag. But these are in here because when you finish with your infusions or whatever you're making, then you take this and pour it in here and then squeeze out all the yummy goodness into your little bottle and um, then the herbs will be left in, in this bag. So it's used to help strain those herbs off whatever projects you... Then, 
We have a June Bug Essentials Nourishing Lip Balm. Coconut oil, mango butter, beeswax, avocado, and almond oil infused with calendula flowers, peppermint, and lavender essential oils. Organic. Yum. Mmm. Uh, I'm not going to put it on. I have my lipstick on. Darn it. I almost got so excited that I did. But it just smears my lipstick everywhere. So, very nice. And who can have too many of these? I have them all over the place sitting, and I use them all over the place sitting. Uh, there's a little card here. Um, looks like it goes with that. Natural and plant-based essential body care mindfully made with wellness in mind. June Bug Essentials. So, and it looks like they have an Etsy store. If you're interested in their products. They always try and send us a couple of little extra things like a tea and a lip balm or something like that. And it's a nice addition. Then you have your stickers. And it looks like they gave us four this time. And those can go again on your finished product so that you can write how long the product, because depending on what it is and what it's infused in, will determine the length of how, the, how long that product can set on the shelf. Um, they use amazing, great quality herbs. And just know with essential oils, herbs, anything like that, if you're making medicine, you wanna get the highest quality you can. Um, organic is always going to be better, although we know that organic term gets thrown around and doesn't have really that set definition for at least the United States. So that alone doesn't say that it's good. But look into the practices. Are they using pesticides as they grow their herbs? I will tell you probably the best place that I have found to get herbs. And when you go to herbal stores, they're super expensive. Go to herbco.com. Um, it's basically a, the, um, um, it's an herb company that's used for food and stuff. Now I cannot even think of the name. But Herbco, if you go there, um, the reason that you know their herbs are going to be good is because they're almost all of them are made for edible purposes as well. So everything on there, and you can see if they're organic or not. Um, great pricing because it's more for the herbal industry or for the restaurant industry, so it's not herbal prices so you can get a big bag of beautiful herbs for a really decent price so I would encourage you to go there they always have their health disclaimer in there which you know I have exactly that health disclaimer on my videos as well just realizing that you know you need to take control of your own health even as a natural past student when I'm seeing clients we really see that as a relationship what I take into my body is not going to act the same as when you take it into your body. So make sure that you realize this is for educational purposes. Check with your physician. Do your own research to see whether or not it's something that would be beneficial to you. Now we have our three herbs. So, and actually let me start just a little bit and tell you a little bit in the packet before I show you the herbs of what's, <clears throat> what they have and why this box is so amazing for the beginning herbalist. So it has introduction into herbal beauty. Um, I'm not going to read all of that. That was, like I said, they go into a lot of what beauty is and they had a hard time naming the box because they didn't want it to um, see more superficial beauty kind of a thing. Uh, it, this is going to focus then on taking care of skin, hair, and we'll touch briefly on nail health. Then they have herbs in the skin and goes all the way through the skin, gives you information on the skin. I'm not going to get into all of that because it would take too long, but I did highlight just a couple of pieces in these sections that I could share with you. So it says, when thinking of herbal remedies for skin conditions, we must approach it from a holistic perspective. That means that the cause of the condition must be the focus of the treatment rather than the symptoms that appear. When faced with a pervasive skin condition, we need to think critically about what exactly the body is trying to express via the skin. So realize that when we're dealing with skin rashes or anything like that, that 
it, it's fine to treat the rash itself and the signs and symptoms, but that's why we do so much in Western medicine. We might get rid of the rash, but we don't ever look at what's going on inside our body that's causing that rash. And so then we may end up with it reoccurring again. So just remember that with holistic medicine, we're not just looking to treat the signs and symptoms of whatever we're experiencing, but looking to try and figure out what's going on in our body that's causing us to show those signs and symptoms. In Chinese traditional medicine, or TCM, which my natural path program is based on, the skin is governed by the metal element of autumn and is considered the third lung, being the outer organ in contact with the air. They see lung and skin crop problems as closely related. And then of course, you've got your herbal actions that we're gonna go over. Um, some of the herbal actions for this box, so I'm not going to go over that in there. Then they have a whole section on herbal skin care, talking about what is the hair, um, and goes all the way through different suggestions for recommending for healthy hair, healthy eyelashes, that kind of thing. It says when it comes to herbs, we will want to work with ones that stimulate circulation to the scalp, help reduce stress, and are rich in nutrients. So that's going to be our focus with the hair. Then it has a section called Nails, Nails, Nails. And this section I'm just going to read a little bit about again. Fingernails provide good clues to a person's overall health. For instance, when a doctor presses your nails, he or she is checking for blood circulation. As an EMT, I know when you press down on your nails and then you let go, it's white, and you want that to refill back to its pink state within less than two seconds to show that you have good cap refill, capillary refill, because you're testing the capillaries in the nail bed. And if it comes back to pink within two seconds, then you have good oxygen for capillary refill. Um, by looking at your nails, a doctor can find changes that may be associated with skin problems, lung disease, anemia, and other medical conditions. Again, so on your nails, sometimes you'll have like a nail that has, you know, a big white at the bottom there, and that can sometimes mean things. Sometimes your nails will get ridges on them, and that can mean health things. Sometimes you'll get white lines. There are different things where your nail kind of is a window to your health, and you can often see um, health issues revealed in your nails. So now, herbal actions. Remember, herbal actions are the most important thing that we want to focus on when we're learning herbs, at least in my humble opinion, because if you understand the herbal actions of the herb, then you're going to automatically know what that herb will do for you. So let's go through the um, herbal actions for skin, hair, and nails. These are the herbal actions that we're looking for in the herbs we're using and why they're good for skin, hair, and nails. So first is an adaptogen, and herbs with adaptogenic actions are those which promote physiological ad adaptability to stress. They improve our stress threshold. And some herbs that you might recognize are ashwagandha, licorice, um, ginseng, uh, and those kinds of things. Then the next herbal action is an alternative. And an alternative herb gradually restores the proper function of the body and increases health and vitality. They alter the body's process of metabolism so that tissues can best deal with a range of functions from nutrition to elimination. And herbs that, have, that are considered um, alternative are things like nettle, red clover, dandelion, burdock, those kinds of things. Then we have a circulatory stimulant. And again, like when we were talking about with the hair, we want good stimulation. With the skin, good circulation is going to bring that glow to our skin and help get the oxygen to our skin uh, to improve our skin. Uh, so circulatory stimulants are stimulants that are used to describe an action that quickens or enlivens the physiological activity of the body in some way. So circulatory stimulants encourage blood flow and circulation either throughout the body or in a particular region that that herb is known to have an affinity for. And herbs with the circulatory stimulant uh, herbal action are like rosemary, ginger, cayenne, 
cinnamon, echinacea, um, or yarrow. Then the next uh, herbal action is an emollient. And an emollient is an herb that helps to soften, smooth, or protect the skin. And those are going to be plants like aloe, uh, plantain, or like chickweed. Uh, the next herbal action is heptic or heptoprotective. These herbs are an umbrella term for herbal remedies which support the liver in a variety of ways. So anything that supports the liver is going to tone, strengthen, and in some ways um, enliven or help the flow of bile. Uh, some of those herbs are like dandelion root, turmeric, licorice, or milk thistle. The next herbal action is a lymphatic, and in the lymphatic herbs have an ability to move lymph and can increase lymphatic flow, moving fluid and protein away from areas of inflammation so that fre fresh lymph, rich in oxygen and nutrients needed for tissue repair, can replace it. So obviously, um, when I'm doing my gua sha's and stuff, I work a lot on lymphatic massage here. You've got your lymph nodes in different places that you can use a stone or a gua sha if you're having problems with that and massage those lymph nodes that will help with that as well. But herbs that will help with that are things like red clover, calendula, or red root. The next action we have is a nutritive tonic, and these are the things we were talking about to give nutrients to your skin. They're gentle enough to be taken daily to help tone and strengthen the body systems. They're rich in nutrients and minerals and promote general well-being and healthy energy levels. Some examples of this are oat straw, nettles, alfalfa, dandelion, red clover, raspberry leaf, and hawthorn. So those are our herbal actions that we're looking at for this. And our first herb is horsetail. So it, they come in a nice little bag and you can see it's a pretty full bag compared to my hand and got a good amount of herb in there. Um, they have been putting a little bit more in after people said that there wasn't quite enough. So there is ample herb in here to at least make your two projects. And honestly, I've made at least three and still had a good amount left. So it just depends on how much you're making and what you're using. Remember, horsetail does have that uh, warning on it that it is the highest in silica, which is why it's good for your skin, your hair, and your nails. It will help them to grow because of the silica in it. But we do want to be careful with this. Now I'm going to open it and show it to you. Um, I'm not pestling it and I'm not ruffling my hands in it, so I'm not putting any into the air. So I feel safe just to show you the herb without a face mask. But when you're utilizing and working with horsetail, you want to use a face mask at the very least and then, like I said, eye covering is recommended as well. So, just kind of show you without, let me see if I can get it to come down a little bit. There we go. So there, oops, so there you go. So, I'm not gonna handle it a bunch because of the silica warning. I've honestly worked with horse hair, or <laughs> horse hair, horse tail before, and um, haven't had any problems with it. But again, if you're going to utilize it very often, if you're doing large quantities, always heed those safety precautions. So then it comes with a horsetail monograph. And a monograph just gives us information on the herb. And they encourage you, obviously, to make your own. I end up doing my own cards like this, as well as keeping the ones that they send. So, horsetail monograph, and I'm just going to hit some, you know, some things on here. I'm actually hitting quite a bit of it, but not all of it because I don't want to just sit here and read. So, horsetail is also known as shade grass, candock, or bottle brush. Um, mostly, you use the aerial parts on it, and the herbal actions are it's a nutritive, anti-inflammatory, diuretic, urinary antiseptic, urinary antispasmodic, astringent, a styptic, which is a hemostatic, which means that basically like the old styptic sticks that you would get for when you were shaving your legs and you cut yourself and you put it on there, basically it says that it stops hemorrhaging and bleeding. So yarrow is a good one for that, right? 
Uh, interesting thing that I found in another book, because I usually study three or four books besides just their monograph, is that it re reproduces through spores like a fern. And I guess I didn't know a fern reproduced by spores either. The stems are hollow like reeds. And um, so when we get to the magical uses and stuff, there's some fun things with that. Uh, energetics and taste is neutral, bland, salty, and bitter. Uh, with a preparation type, you're going to want to use it in decoctions, tinctures, vinegars, vinegars, or infused oils. Medicinal uses. Horsetail is known as the hair, skin, and nail herb because of its high silica content. Uh, it helps the human body absorb and utilize calcium and may be helpful for osteoporosis as it is also used for arthritis, mineral deficiency, broken bones, fractures, and sprains. Its primary use is in strengthening and healing joints and bones and connective tissue and is also good for urinary infections and uh, urinary inflammation, incontinence, and bedwetting in children. Uh, it's used for frequent urination, prostate, uh, to speed wound healing, and to stop bleeding. Horsetail has a long history of use as a wound healer and can be employed as a wash or in a cream for acne, rashes, or other inflammatory skin conditions. The contraindications don't consume the plant itself, but only in extractions and decoctions. Use in moderation for children, elderly, and the weak, Horsetail can be drying and consuming excessive amounts can irritate the kidneys. So, that being said, don't use it if you have problems with kidney stones or that kind of thing. It's not going to be good for you. Um, even edema, uh, when it's caused by heart or kidney function, uh, or with pharma diuretics. So if you're on a pharmaceutical that's a diuretic, you, you want to stay away from horsetail or use it very sparingly talk to your doctor about it and see what they think. Uh, the history and folklore, horsetail family emerged from boggy primordial swamps over a hundred million years before dinosaurs walked the earth. A hundred million years before dinosaurs walked the earth, this herb was available. That's amazing to me. Uh, it's an ancient pla plant and back then the plant could be as large as the pine and spruce trees that we have today. That's amazing. I can't imagine a horsetail that big. That's really crazy to even think about. Um, the mature plants were used as a scouring pad of sorts for shining metal because of its high mineral content. And again, that silica is going to help to shine things up as well. The ancient Greeks, Roman, and Chinese herbalists used it for dyeing. It yields a soft green color, so you can use it for dyeing eggs if you want to do a natural dyeing for March for Easter this year. Uh, the stalks were used to make whistles to call spirits, and in Japan, horsetail still used as a fine sandpaper to sand wood before varnishing. The indigenous use, um, it was used by tribes as a kidney and urinary aid, as well as a scouring tool, fiber, and material to make children's toys and games. Being that it has that reed, um, you can make whistles out of it. So, magical uses. Horsetail has been used in fertility spells and is said to increase the chances of fertility if placed in the bedroom. Uh, some say a flute or whistle made of horsetail will charm snakes and lure them to the player. I don't want one of those whistles. I like snakes. Um, ones that I know what are, then I love handling them. I love reptiles. But in the wild, yeah, don't want the snakes coming to me. I want them to stay happy out in their home and let me walk by and I won't bother them and they don't bother me. Unless it's a little water snake or something and then I can say hi. Uh, yeah, the reed-like structure is effective for invoking Pan, the horned god who, rep who represents nature. And it's useful when used in love and fertility magic. So that's our first one is our horsetail. Next, we have rosemary. And here's our rosemary bag. Most of us know what rosemary looks like, so it's not going to be something too exciting to show you. Mm. Now, you may look at some of this because you're going to look at it and go, Wow, karma, that's really dry. 
really dry looking, right? Um, because, you know, when we use it in food and stuff, we often dry it just a little bit and it's still more green. So this is really dry. That's good for what we're doing. The reason that that's good is because if you do like an oil infusion and you use the fresh herb or herbs that haven't been dried out enough, the water content in that herb will actually cause your oil infusion to mold. So if you're ever having problems with an oil infusion that you're making molding, that's the key there. Make sure that you're drying out really, really well the herbs that you're using before you use them. Um, rosemary monograph. So rosemary, I didn't know this. Rosemary is in the mint family, and I didn't know that. It doesn't really look or smell anything like mint, so now I'm going to have to go back and study the mint family and see how that all comes together. If you know and have any additional information, please share in the video below. I'm really enjoying learning with all the things that you guys are commenting about. This is such a great community because we're learning together. The parts that are used medicinally are the aerial parts, leaving out the woody stems towards the bottom of the plant. Herbal actions, it's an antispasmodic, an antidepressant, an antimicrobial, an antioxidant, a circulatory stimulant, and a bitter. Um, preparation types, you can use it in tinctures, infusions, glycerites, infused oils, vinegars, culinary seasoning, or burned, such as a smudge. For the ancestor recall ceremony that I did for three people this last new moon, we used rosemary smudge sticks uh, because rosemary is for remembrance. And so it's a perfect herb to use as a cleansing and helps with remembrance. So uh, medicinal uses, it's a common spice that we use in our kitchen. Of course, we know we use it a lot in uh, Italian cooking and that kind of thing. Rosemary is for mental clarity, cloudy thinking, brain fog, and what David Winston calls stagnant depression. It can have an affinity to places where stagnancy in the mind, emotions, and area of the body. Rosemary supports the cardiovascular system, even down to the small capillaries in the brain, extremities, and eyes. So uh, this can be beneficial for folks that struggle with um, vasoconstricted head headaches and tense muscles. So a vasoconstrictive headache is going to be a regular headache. Um, if you get migraines, those are vasodilating headaches. The, the vessels in your brains actually get bigger instead of constricting. So for a regular headache, rosemary would be good, but with a vasodilator like a migraine headache, you don't want to use rosemary for it. Um, it is an antioxidant that helps decrease oxidative stress and free radicals in the body, and it's useful in cases of diabetes, cancer, and arthritis. It's an herb for the hair and stimulates the hair follicles and circulation of the scalp. Now, the essential oil can be used to rub on the temples or at the base of the head to relieve headaches, drowsiness, and increase concentration. The fresh leaves can be choosed, chewed as a breath freshener or to combat gum infection. Um, contraindications, avoid using large doses during pregnancy or when trying to conceive. Uh, history and folklore. The ancients of Rome and Greece used rosemary for strengthening the memory, but that wasn't all. It was used for consumption, funerals, weddings, festivals, and magic spells, was also used as an incense in ceremonies. It was an old practice to burn rosemary in hospitals and it was often paired with juniper berries to prevent infection and purify the air for the sick chambers. So, you know, you have someone with COVID in your house, burn a little rosemary with some juniper berries in there. Yeah, maybe not. If you're already struggling with respiratory issues with COVID, probably burning a smoke incense is not going to be the best thing to do. But you could use the essential oils um, and see if you could get some relief that way. So, uh, rosemary is for remembrance. The indigenous, the rosemary is native to the Mediterranean area, so we don't have uh, any documented use by the in early indigenous people of North America. 
Uh, correspondences, elements, fire, planet, sun. Polarity is yang, so male. The magical uses, it's used in spells for fidelity and remembrance, as well as to dispel jealousy. It's useful in ritual baths for making sacred herbal water or for ritual cleansing, blessing, and purification. When you bathe in rosemary, it will enhance your memory and it will make you more memorable to those you meet throughout the day. Uh, so if you're going on a job interview, take a rosemary bath. Rosemary and spells to enhance memory include spells for success in school. So uh, if you're needing a little help with a test or something, do a little sachet with some rosemary in it, carry it around, smell it, have it help you with your mental clarity for studying for school. It's also used in spells to retain youth and can be burned as an incense when you're meditating, doing dream work, or to remember your past lives. If you put it under your pillow, it will help you to remember your dreams and keep away nightmares. Um, rosemary was sacred to the Spanish who associated it with the Virgin Mother who sought shelter under its branches. I thought that was an interesting historical piece I picked up from one of my other books. Rosemary, grow rosemary to attract elves. There's one new one for you. So I've been looking at fairies, not so much elves, but if you want elves, grow rosemary. Rosemary can be used for a substitute as frankincense, especially when you're doing it for the purification. Uh, protection, love, lust, mental powers. It's even used in exorcisms, purification, healing, sleep, and youth. So the um, smoke cleanse or in a purification bath is going to help you to rid of uh, negativity. And it is one of the oldest incenses used. You can also hang it on your porch. If you hang it on your porch, it's said that it will keep thieves away. So there you go, there's our rosemary. So oat straw is part of the oat plant. It is the plant that we get oat, like that we eat oatmeal with. But those oats are actually um, harvested later in the season, whereas the oat straw would be harvested before those oats are mature and ready to harvest. But it is from the same plant, um, just before the oats are ready to be harvested. Oat straw is native to the Mediterranean region as well and was cultivated in Europe around 100 AD. Um, oats came to symbolize prosperity and sustenance and can be used for money or abundance spells. It dates back to the medieval period where it was used for brain health and support and today it's still used to feed livestock. Oat straw is harvested while the seeds are still green and includes the grassy green husks of the plant. Uh, it is calming, nerve calming, and reduces anxiety. It lowers your inhibitions, so you know, good for that love magic, as long as you're not trying to manipulate someone, right? And that's where the saying comes of sowing your wild oats because it reduces that anxiety, it, the lover's inhibitions. If it's lowering those inhibitions, then it is um, making it more easy for you to have excuses to sow your wild oats. It's calming, but not a sedative. We talked a little bit about that earlier, but it energizes and still calms. So some things, if you're wanting to go to sleep, you want something that's gonna not energize you and calm you and make you sleepy. But a lot of us during the day need some calming, but we don't really want to be sleepy. So we want an energetic calm. Uh, it is an effective aphrodisiac. So they say. Uh, it nourishes the skin and can be used as a base for any beauty magic. So those are our three herbs, oat straw, rosemary, and horsetail. Then after we get through all of that, they have project ideas. Now I'm gonna read them off to you really quickly so you can see what was available in this box and then I'm gonna share the ones that I want to make. So they have simple tincture options. Acetum hair rinse. An acetum is a vinegar base, and uh, so it's going to be good as a, a rinse or a wash on your hair. Uh, infused oil treatment for hair and beard, infused oil skin serum, infused oil for nails, infused witch hazel. Uh, then they have, like if you're making a tincture or an infused oil, they've got the pages on the method on how to make those. Uh, 
And then the bonus recipes are Nutriative Overnight Infusion, Rosemary Hydrosol, which um, I want to talk about for a minute, Natural Face Mask for both dry, normal, and oily skin. They have recipes for Grain Clay Cleanser, Facial and Under Eye Cream, Facial Steam for dry skin, and Facial Steam for oily skin. So there is a smorgasbord of recipes and things that you can utilize the herbs that you get in your box for. But before I talk about the three that I'm going to make and hopefully video for you, because it takes about a month, so before too long you should see the video from last month's box on heart health. Uh, this is the rosemary hydrosol I wanted to talk a little bit about. I'm not going to make it this month because it does use um, live fresh rosemary. So I'm going to plant those seeds, get that rosemary growing, and then make this when I have rosemary. Because if you grow your own herbs and put all that love and intention into them and then use it for your medicine, way stronger than if you just go buy herbs. Although buying herbs, especially of good quality, there's no fault in that, especially because I may live in an area where I can't grow the herb or I may just have a hard time growing things. Uh, but this method is really cool. A hydrosol, they're taking a large stock pot, putting some water in it, putting the rosemary in it. Then they're taking a steamer and putting the steamer down in there and then a bowl inside the steamer. So like if you have one of those close-up steamers, vegetable steamers, you can put that down in there. The rosemary's underneath it and then you set the bowl on top of the steamer. Then you're going to let the water get to a boil and you're going to take the lid and it's an airtight lid so no holes on the lid and instead of putting them on the top you're going to turn them the opposite way and put them bottom side up so that the concave of the lid is going to go this way into the pan with the handle probably on the bottom which is fine because we're going to have a big bowl as that water is boiling i'm going to put ice on top of that lid and that ice is going to help that concoction um, um, losing the word, um, condense. <laughs> You're going to get that condensation on the lid and that condensation drops are going to come in and then they're going to drop down into your bowl. And then you're going to have that hydrosol in the bowl, which then you can put into a spray bottle to use on your face or whatever else you're using that hydrosol for. So I thought that was a really neat way. Basically what you're doing is you're distilling the herb. Um, much like we distill alcohol, the same kind of a process is used. But I had never, you know, seen directions on how to do a smaller quantity of distilling without a distillation setup like my husband has because he's a brewer. So I just wanted to share that method with you because I thought it was awesome. This month, I think I am going to make, I'm thinking about the treatment for hair and beard. Um, but I'm not quite sure. So write down in the comments below if there, if that's one that you want to see me make. But I am definitely looking at the infused oil skin serum and the infused oil for nails. Those are two that I definitely want to make. And then the third that I was thinking about making was that um, hair and beard. Um, I'm not sure if this will go out before I start making the recipes, but it might. So comment down below and let me know, is there one of the other recipes that you were interested in seeing me make? Because I'm happy to take suggestions and to do it that way. Even if I have to maybe add it to the following months, I could still make that if someone gives me a request to make it. So, wow, great box this month. I'm super excited to get to my recipes. I'm just getting my um, recipes from last month. Uh, the video's done and finalized because that product is finally ready for me to use and I'm excited to do that video for you and let you know how those products turned out. Thank you so much for joining me. I know this is a pretty educational video and lots of kind of, I'm sorry if I read a lot, but I highlight and want to make sure that I cover the areas that I need to because I'm learning these and I want to make sure that what I'm putting out for you gives you complete information, um, but always do your own research as well. Thanks for joining me. Hit that thumbs up on the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Come back often and join us on the channel where you can say, karma's my friend. Bye y'all.